Rescue efforts in Turkey and Syria continue, but hopes of finding many more survivors beneath the rubble are fading fast. NATO Secretary General says the West must start producing more ammunition if Ukraine is to keep up the fight against Russia. More growth and less inflation as the European Commission releases its winter economic forecast. In Turkey, temperatures are dropping, along with hopes of finding any more survivors from last week's catastrophic earthquakes. In the southern city of Karaman Marash, a TV crew helps out rescue teams with a thermal camera, searching the rubble for signs of life. But the bodies are piling up. By Monday morning, the confirmed death toll reached over 33,000, and it's expected to keep rising. Here, cranes and bulldozers are being moved in a sign that search teams believe there is no one left to save beneath this pile of rubble. The situation is equally desperate in the city of Hatay, which was almost completely destroyed by last week's 7.8 magnitude quake. Over the border in Syria, a desperate lack of resources is proving detrimental to rescue efforts. Emergency relief officials at the UN say residents in the northwest feel rightly abandoned. Approval issues between the Syrian government and rebel-held territories are holding up aid deliveries. The hangover from 12 years of war proving difficult to shake. <laughs> Some UN aid has got through and Lebanon's powerful Shiite movement Hezbollah has sent a convoy of 23 trucks carrying food and medical aid to Syria's quake-hit port city of Latakia. Officials say more aid will be sent to Aleppo and other affected regions. NATO and its allies must ramp up production of ammunition if it's to continue providing Ukraine with the capacity to fight Russia. The Alliance Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg says that Kiev is using much more supplies than the production capacity of NATO members. It represents a challenge to both NATO and Ukraine. Stoltenberg is now urging allies to invest in production as well as expanding it. For example, the waiting time for large caliber ammunition has increased from 12 to 28 months. Orders placed today would only be delivered two and a half years later. So we need to ramp up production and invest in our production capacity. NATO defence ministers will discuss the matter on Tuesday and Wednesday in Brussels. But with the Russian offensive in eastern Ukraine having already started, things are becoming more and more urgent. I think the reality is that we have seen the start already. Because we've seen what, what, what Russia does now, President Putin do now, is to send in thousands of thousands of more troops, um, accepting a very high rate of casualty, um, taking uh, big losses, uh, but putting pressure on the Ukrainians. And what uh, Russia lacks in quality, they try to compensate in quantity meaning that the leadership, the, the, the logistics, the equipment, the, 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 the training uh, don't have the same level uh, as the Ukrainian forces, but they have more forces. NATO defense ministers will also discuss the need to provide Ukraine with more weapons, with one of the more sensitive issues being if they will send fighter jets, as Kiev is now demanding. Ukrainian military officials and Russian pro-nationalist voices are downplaying Russia's ability to launch a sweeping large-scale offensive in Donetsk region in the current circumstances of the Russian armed forces. Now, this is the latest conclusion by the Institute for the Study of War. 
The think tank has previously assessed that Russian forces have regained the initiative on the Svatova criminal line, but that the offensive has not yet reached its full tempo. Russian forces reported culmination and tactical failures around Vuhledar in the region of Donetsk have likely further weakened the Russian ultranationalist community's belief that Russian forces are able to launch a decisive offensive operation. The Russian military command is deploying its most elite units to the Bakhmut area amid the reported Russian heavy personnel losses here in smaller formations using urban infiltration tactics according to the limited footage of Russian tactics in the area that the Institute for the Study of War has observed. Now, Russian offensive operations elsewhere in Donetsk region and along the Svatova criminal line have resulted in marginal advances without operational significance thus far. Despite the current operational focus on central, Donbass Russia remains concerned about guarding the extremities of its extended front line, says the UK Defence Ministry. This is demonstrated by continued construction of defensive fortifications in Zaporizhia region and Luhansk regions and deployment of personnel. A major Ukrainian breakthrough in Zaporizhia would seriously challenge the viability of Russia's land bridge linking Russia's Rostov region and Crimea. Ukrainian success in Luhansk would further undermine Russia's professed war aim of what Moscow calls liberating the Donbas. Deciding which of these threats to prioritize countering is likely one of the central dilemmas for Russian operational planners. No to judicial reform, save Israeli democracy. That's what thousands of demonstrators chanted as they gathered in front of the Israeli parliament to protest against the planned judicial reform. Critics say the plan seeks to weaken Israel's Supreme Court. On Monday, opposition deputies walked out of a parliamentary committee in protest, whilst Israeli President Yitzhak Herzog made a special address calling for dialogue. I Netanyahu's critics say the plan will damage the country's fragile system of democratic checks and balances. They also say the PM, who is on trial for corruption, is motivated by a personal grudge against the legal system. In the last seven decades, more than 4,800 children were sexually abused within the Catholic Church in Portugal. It is a harrowing figure, released by an independent commission, and was based on 512 direct complaints. However, the commission's coordinator says that there are likely more victims. A maior percentagem das vítimas afasta-se da Igreja enquanto, enquanto instituição e da prática religiosa após o abuso, perdurado, perdurando essa posição de forma transgeracional. The document reports that the average age of a victim at the onset of abuse was 11 years old. On March 3rd, an assembly is scheduled to analyze the implications of the report. The chair of the assembly, Bishop Jose Ornelas, has already responded to it, saying, quote, It is a dramatic situation, which is not easy to overcome. More growth and less inflation. Europe will do better than expected in 2023. The European Commission has revised its growth forecast for the EU, which is now expected to grow by 0.8%, which means that Europe should narrowly avoid a recession this winter. The figures mark a sharp slowdown compared to last year, but show the economy is resisting the consequences of the war in Ukraine better than expected. According to the European Commissioner for Economy, Paolo Gentiloni, this economic outlook is not coming out of the blue. Well, I think this is the lesson learned with the two major crises that we had, the pandemic crisis and the crisis uh, from the Russian aggression energy crisis. Uh, we showed that a common response, next generation EU, 
uh, the sure mechanism, what we were able to do together on the energy um, independence was um, effective and made possible to have a better economic outlook. When it comes to inflation, the European Commission has lowered its forecast for the EU in 2023 to 6.4% and estimates that the peak has now been passed thanks to the low in energy prices. However, headwinds remain strong as consumers and businesses continue to face high prices, eroding households' purchasing power. Brussels also warns that uncertainty surrounding the forecast was high amid lingering geopolitical tensions. The risks are connected to uh, the, the Russian invasion, the war, the consequences on energy. Um, and this also in Europe triggered high inflation. Also, if now we know that inflation is not only connected to energy prices, so this is the bigger risk that we have to face. So if we continue with common response, I am sure that we can also um, count on better outlook than the one we presented today, which is better than expected, but not yet a quite positive outlook for the economy. Ireland remains the best performing European economy with a surprising rate of growth at 4.9% largely driven by the investment of foreign multinationals. On the other hand, Sweden is the only country in negative growth at minus 0.8%.